I'm glad we're together today in this space. Uh, my name is Mark Cummins, and I'm the pastor at Church of Hope. And if you're a regular attender, welcome. So glad that week after week we join together in this space. And if by chance this is your first time, I'm really glad that we're beginning our friendship today. Now understand that this broadcast literally goes around the world for free. See, we believe that life's at its best when people discover hope in Christ. There are people who give generously so this broadcast can be reached across every continent. If you've never given, I would invite you today to give. You can go to our webpage, hopeinocala.com, and drop down on the giving bar and give a one-time gift. Or you can give generously beyond just today. And if God's blessed you, help us as we give hope around the world. But for now, I want you to open up your heart and your mind. Let Jesus speak to you because what I believe is that when we open up our minds and let Jesus speak to us, life doesn't become perfect and all the problems don't go away, but you experience his presence in you, with you, and for you. Open up your heart. Let Jesus speak to you today. Peace. In 1850, a French acrobat, Blondin, he walked across on a tightrope the Great Niagara Falls. A raging water 160 feet below him from the Canadian side across to the United States. The crowd gathered and they cheered and they were all filled with enthusiasm. As he came to the American side and turned his wheelbarrow to walk across to the other side, he asked, how many of y'all believe that I can do it again? And they all applauded and they screamed and clapped. And then he asked this question, who will get in the wheelbarrow and go with me? And it was silent. Nobody got on the wheelbarrow. You see, they all believed about him. They all believed that he had the ability to walk across. But no one on that day believed in him. The missing piece was personal belief. And the irony about Easter is, well, the star of Easter, the hero of Easter, Jesus is missing. Early on that day, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene runs to the tomb in John chapter 20. As she approaches, there are no Roman soldiers, and that stone that was rolled in to keep Jesus in is now to the side. She goes inside and she notices Jesus is missing. The piece of the puzzle of her life that she had hoped for. I, I mean, she was a follower. She had had an experience with Jesus. She saw miracles, blind eyes, now see, deaf ears, hear. A man named Lazarus who was dead became alive again. But then this week, she was an eyewitness to this mock trial, the injustice then the crucifixion. And for the last few days, the peace of her life named Jesus lay dead. On that morning, she goes to the tomb, and now Jesus is missing. So she runs back, and she finds two of the disciples, Peter and John. She says, he's missing. I went. I looked. He's not there. The two disciples, they run. They arrive. They look in. And the same conclusion, Jesus is missing. I wonder this morning, what's the missing piece in your life? In our humanity, the struggle is for real. In some of us, the missing piece is we thought at this stage in our life, we would have a significant other. We would have found the love of our life. And he or she is missing. 
Others of us, we, well, found the love of our life. We exchanged vows on a particular day. But the love that we thought till death do us part is missing. Maybe you wanted a child and the missing piece in your home is that little boy or that little girl that you had hoped for and you've prayed for, but for whatever reason, there are no children in your home. Maybe the missing piece is now, as you're trying to figure out life, your parents are aging. And you don't have the resources to care for them. And you're kind of wondering, how will I be able to honor mom and dad in this season of life? Some of us, perhaps it's a loved one who the missing piece is their mind. They're going through dementia and Alzheimer's. This past week in the city, in the county that we live, how much we love living in Marion County. Some of us say the free state of Florida. And three teenagers murdered by two other teenagers and one still on the run. And what's missing is a sense of of security. One more time. Our local high school, just miles from where you're sitting, on lockdown. Helicopters fly over the school. There are missing pieces in our lives. On that first Easter, Jesus is the missing piece. Mary goes back. The the disciples, they go, they see Jesus missing. They go back, and then Mary goes back another time. She's overwhelmed in her grief. Let me tell you something. The missing pieces in our life, they are overwhelming. We can't take what's missing and just set it to the side. It is all consuming in our lives. She's at the grave. Jesus is missing, and she is weeping. She is crying. She does not know what to do. So much that the Bible says she's having a conversation with the angels. And she says to angels, hey, do you know where they've taken him? Please tell me. I'm looking for him. He's missing from my life. Later, she turns and she thought, he's the gardener. But so overwhelmed by the missing piece in our life, so overwhelmed she can't recognize that it's actually Jesus. I'm telling you this morning, those missing pieces in your life, they are all consuming The missing piece of justice is you have at times perhaps been minimized or marginalized and you wonder, where is the justice? When will there ever be equity in the country in which I live? It's a a missing piece, some accusation that's been put against you and you're, you're looking for some kind of redemption for the truth. It's missing. My question to you this morning is this. What's missing in your life? Because I know this. Those missing pieces in our life, they consume us, and we will spend all of our time and our energy to find what's missing. Those missing pieces leave us incarcerated from freedom. We can't step out into our ordinary lives because, well, something's missing. It could be as simple as Monday morning. It's been a good weekend, right? And now you're ready to get up and go to work and you got dressed. You're running maybe perhaps potentially just a little bit behind. And what's missing? Your keys, your wallet. Where are they, right? And it's kind of like you're incarcerated. You cannot go forward until you find what's missing. Maybe it's more serious. We have in our society what's called an Amber Alert. When a child goes missing, this alert is sent out across on signs, public signs and billboards, and even to your text phone. Because we're going to stop everything until the missing child is found. That's happening on the first Easter. Mary is looking for Jesus. She goes back in John chapter 20. She goes back to the tomb, the last place that she saw, she experienced Jesus. We do that. We often go back to places. 
That, that place where perhaps we had a sense of hope. We had some joy. It's the last place that we remembered being whole. Places. We often go back to people. We feel love is missed in our lives, so perhaps to find love, we go to all the wrong places. Or perhaps in a relationship, in a marriage, I'm not receiving the kind of love or the value or the respect for my significant other, and so we go look in other places for what's missing. Or, at times, to numb the pain of the missing pieces in our life, well, it's just one drink. And then it becomes two. And then it becomes a bottle. And then it becomes breakfast and lunch and dinner because what's missing in our life incarcerates us from hope. It keeps us from living and breathing and experiencing life at its best. Even a place like this, church, Mary at the tomb is having a spiritual encounter. Call it a religious moment. The angels, even the gardener who she's so overwhelmed, she's looking for what's missing. She's so overwhelmed, she's having a conversation with Jesus. You might be here today. Maybe you're watching online and you're trying to find a sense of hope. There's a missing piece in your life. We, we search for what's missing. Here's the irony about today. Is at first glance, it's Jesus that's missing. At first glance, it's the hope that he was the Messiah. At first glance, the hope that justice would come and this inequity of a, the government that's upon us, that somehow he would come and he would make it so much better. The irony is they're looking for Jesus, but Jesus isn't lost. Jesus isn't missing. See, actually, Jesus is finding. Jesus left heaven because what's missing is you and me and us from a vibrant relationship with God because of our sin. There's nothing we can do about it. We can't fix it. We can try. We can better organize our lives. We can try to behave better. We can have better habits, do less wrong things. But at the end of the day, you know what's missing is as human beings, we do not have the power to fix this thing called sin, this disease in our lives. So Jesus goes looking. And Easter is a celebration of Jesus finding. Jesus leaving a perfect place called heaven and finding you and finding me back to the gospel of, of John. Notice what Jesus says. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, notice, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. That's what missing pieces does in our life. It creates fear. We become afraid. We're, we are incarcerated. We're locked out from hope, and we're locked into the fear and the injustice and the hurt and the pain and the sorrow, sometimes of our own choices and sometimes from the choices of others. In this particular moment, there's another guy in this story. His name is Thomas. Now, Thomas is a disciple, and Thomas is not present in this moment. Why? Because Jesus is missing. And in his mind, he thinks, listen, I've got to find him. I've got to discover what's going on. I've got to dot some I's here. I've got to cross some T's. I have to figure this out. And notice, Jesus comes and he stands amongst them, the disciples, except for Thomas. And the phrase that he says, peace be with you. Those who had a missing peace in their life, the words of Jesus is, peace be with you. Notice what happens next. He said, as he showed his hands and his sides, and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. That's what happens when you find what's lost, the joy. When you find those keys, the joy. When... A relationship seems lost 
and you find it afresh and anew, the joy. When your hope is lost and you discover it again, the joy inside of us. When the missing piece is discovered, our lives, our minds, our emotions are filled with joy. Jesus isn't lost. Jesus is finding. He's finding you and he's finding me. And here's the thought, is that the peace that you're looking for, it's not in the absence of problems. Many of us are convinced if we could just have less problems, we see the problems in our culture, we see the problems in our government, and if somehow, when then, when this problem is solved, when this inequity, when this injustice, when this law, when she behaves better, when he thinks different, when this happens, when this problem is gone, solved, fixed, I'll have peace. But peace isn't the absence of problems. It's the presence of God. Jesus made it clear, in this world, you'll have trials, you'll have tribulations, you'll have sorrow. There are inequities. This world is broken. But he said, in the midst of all this, he says, be of good cheer. It's okay. That missing piece that's not whole, that's inside of you, he knows it's not whole. That's why we have Easter. He comes to give you peace. The peace that passes all understanding. You will go back to the story. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. His peace isn't just for Easter Sunday. His peace isn't just for a holiday. His peace is for every day, today, tomorrow, and even next week. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. This time, Thomas is with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and he stood amongst them and he said, here's what I know, is many of us right now, you're living behind locked doors. Maybe it's a locked door of a habit that you just haven't been able to break. Maybe it's a locked door of, of you know you've made choices, you've done things, and somehow you think you're locked out and locked in. I want you to know that Jesus specializes in going in through your locked life. I don't care how locked up you might be, Jesus specializes in walking through those locked doors to bring you hope, to bring us peace. Because peace is not the absence of problems. Peace is the presence of Jesus. Notice again, he says, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And Thomas replies, my Lord and my God. So on this Easter 2023, I have one question for all of us. I actually think it's perhaps potentially the most important question you'll ever answer in your life. Is Jesus a piece of your life or is Jesus the piece over your life? Your answer to that question will direct your life in one of two di directions. Jesus has a piece of your life. Th th that's good, and, and I applaud you, right? You've got your family life, You've got your career, you've got your education, right? You, you, you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and you throw Jesus in there as well. You, you, you've got a sense of patriotism and, and being a citizen of the country, and you've got your hobbies and other things. And, and so Jesus is a piece. He's a piece of your life. You've added him in. He's an ingredient to this recipe called you. But it's altogether different when Jesus becomes the peace over your life. Many of us are trying to sprinkle him into our everyday, ordinary life. We're trying to add him and somehow think that by just adding us some Jesus along the way that that would make the difference. Where in the end, it's a deliberate decision to make Jesus the peace over your life. See, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 1, that therefore, in other words, because of this whole story about Jesus, you and I have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I get it. We're Americans. I, I get it. You live in the South. 
And there's this idea that if you had a certain kind of education, that life would be more peaceful. And maybe it would be. Or if you could be a better saver and invest and allow your 401k to grow, that would give you peace of mind. Or if we voted a different way and we had different politicians and different kind of laws, that would bring the peace that so many of us want in our life. See, many of us are living the life of adding Jesus as a peace. My question on this Easter day is, will you make Jesus the peace over your life? The Apostle Paul also said to us that the wages of sin is death. I know it's Easter and we're celebrating the life of Jesus, the resurrection, but we all, we all know this. There will come a day where we all take our last breath. I was listening once again yesterday to a commencement speech by Steve Jobs, and he was speaking to students And he outlined three stories from his life. He concluded with this part of his story. He had someone tell him to live his life every day as if it was his last day. And Steve Jobs said to this large gathering, I think it was at Stanford University, that he woke up every single day and he lived as though he would die in that day. He kept the very image of death in the forefront of his mind. And I suggest to you, perhaps in our lifetime, the greatest adventure of anything that brings life to us in our everyday life kept death in front of his life. Because we are all going to die. Every single one of us, it's the wage, it's what we've earned. The question that's in play is, how do we fix it? Do we get better? Do we do this less? Do we do this? And God tells us that we don't fix it. It's the whole story of Jesus. Jesus came, and he loves you, and he loves me. He's not mad at you. On the contrary, he's madly in love with you. He's not put off by what you smoked. He's not put off by what you stole. He's not put off by how you identify yourself or how you vote or or any of the things that the behavior religious crowd often says that you're less than. Jesus came just because he knew we were missing. And he didn't want to think about going through eternity without you, without me. And so in Romans chapter 15, the incredible promise to all of us is this incredible hope. The God of all hope, he gives joy and peace to you this Easter. It's a gift. If you trust in him, not my words, his words. You and I, we're all trusting in someone or something. What I'm I'm suggesting is making Jesus a piece of the puzzle will never lead you to get in with Jesus. You'll stay on the sidelines. You might know about Jesus. You might applaud about Jesus. You're not against. You're not anti-Jesus. But there's an altogether different experience on the sidelines knowing about Jesus compared to getting in the wheelbarrow with Jesus. Jesus specializes on the tightrope we call life with the rushing waters of all of the inequities and injustices and sorrows and behaviors and disappointments and failures and setbacks, he takes us peacefully across to the other side. So this morning, if you've never invited Jesus Christ into your life, if you've never had the courage to get in with Jesus right now today, I'd like to invite you to get in with Jesus. It's your decision. He's been tested by time. There have been countless millions of lives that he has safely carried peacefully to the other side. And he's ready today for you. 
If you've not yet begun that, right where you're sitting, would you have this conversation in your own mind? Hey, Jesus, it's me. I'm done making you a piece of my life. I want to move from knowing about you to getting in with you. I can't. I believe that you died on that cross. You were buried and three days later became alive again. And today I choose you. And to those who are beginning that relationship today, welcome to God's family. Great choice. I'd love to help you continue to grow in following Jesus. If you would text the word today to the number that's on your screen, I'll connect with you and we'll grow, right? A decision for Jesus isn't just a moment in time. A visit to the dentist doesn't happen just in one day. You got to go back and go back and go back and go back. A visit to the gym doesn't bring health just because you went one time. You continue. Following Jesus isn't just a one moment in time. It's a movement for all time. Now, before we go on our way in this day, you might be like, like me. I need a marked moment. I have a, a tendency, a propensity to forget things. I need like this moment where I can reflect and go back. When I begin to doubt myself, when I begin to wonder about that peace of God, I, I remember on a, on a Sunday, I, it was in Ocala, Florida. It was at that Church of Hope. And yeah, I, I, I felt that peace of God. But then, right, you get on with your ordinary lives. And so what I'd like to do this morning is to create a space for you and I to have this marked moment where we make a deliberate decision. Some of you made that decision just a moment ago to move from Jesus as a piece of your life to Jesus as the peace over your life. Some of us, the story of Easter is not new to you. You grew up in church. You've known all about Jesus. But if you got honest this morning, he's been a piece of the puzzle. Today's the day. Make him the peace over your life. Thank you. Being together in this space today is really good. If you've never begun a relationship with Jesus, I'd like to invite you today to start following Jesus. It's not about your behavior. It's not about your church attendance. It's about the reality that Jesus is for you. God's not mad at you. He's madly in love with you. Would you right now pray this prayer with me? Hey God, it's me. I've sinned and I know it. And I can't fix me. But today, I receive you, Jesus, as my Savior. I believe that you died on that cross for me. And that you were buried for three days. And then you became alive again. And I invite you into my life to guide me and direct me all the rest of the days of my life. And with that prayer, my friend, welcome to God's family. I'd like to continue our friendship. If you would email me, pastor at hopeinocala.com. I'll follow up with you and together we'll celebrate Jesus in your life. Peace. Peace.